Hello and welcome to the last Genuine Learning Blog of 2022. I don't know how this year has just flown by, but we are about to embrace our two week uh, time off. We call it our mental health weeks uh, in order to decompress after a really long year of training uh, and allow us to be ready uh, to come into 2023 uh, reset uh, and really ready to embrace. So we are excited. Uh, and so this is our last blog. And we have chosen to cover the proposed changes to the peer review standards. Now, the ASCPA did put this out last month, but there's been a lot going on uh, that we had to cover before we got to this because this is really just a set of technical corrections. So this was actually issued on November 16th of 2022. Comments are due January 31st of 2023. So we have a little bit of time before you have to respond here. Um, but it is a proposed set of, again, omnibus enhancements and technical corrections. They're not looking to make a complete overhaul of the peer review standards, but they are adding a lot of clarifications and a lot of technical corrections. And remember, the peer review program monitors the quality of reviewed firms accounting and auditing systems. And so as a result, uh, this is a requirement that if you are a member of the AICPA and you perform these items, you are required to be uh, a member uh, and to follow these standards. And so um, as we go through this, when you look at the big types of of things, you're going to see updated verbiage, right? They replace the word presently with the word currently, right? In terms of impact, probably not going to be super, um, you know, important uh, change, but it is more accurate description of the type of experience somebody should have. Um, they also moved a lot of requirements to application material. Um, and so as you look at this, you'll see, um, you know, kind of movement uh, back and forth as you go through it. So um, when things really should just be application, they have been adjusted. So you'll see that. Um, they've also done a little bit of clarification um, around what is a finding versus a deficiency, and that section got a nice little update. Um, they updated some of the PCOB requirements, and so they clarified um, you know, what types of engagements, not just audits, but examinations, et cetera, are performed under PCOB, including the verbiage and the report that should be in there. Um, it updates the exhibit around familiarity threats um, by updating the threats, but also the safeguards that could be applied here. Um, and so I think there's a lot of little things that you can be getting uh, pretty comfortable with uh, as we go through here. And so um, they did remove some explicit guidance and allow a little bit more risk assessment. So for example, um, in one of the paragraphs, it used to say you would have to give priority to a certain type of SOC engagement. Now they said you should evaluate uh, whether one or both of these engagements should be selected based on the peer review risk. Um, and they also add some training uh, requirements. So for the captains, review captains, uh, to meet certain training requirements established by the board uh, in order to be able to qualify. Um, and again, they just have a lot of these little clarifications, like um, what matters to be supposed over either a finding or a deficiency. And um, they have some clarifications around even CPE um, and what, uh, you know, what type of um, you know, response is appropriate when there are non-conforming engagements and they kind of clarify the language around these non-conforming engagements and the types of engagements to which you can apply um, CPE courses as a response to the non-conforming engagement. So um, in terms of reading it, it's actually really not that long. Uh, and so you have the opportunity if you're interested, even if you are like us taking a couple of weeks off, uh, you will have the opportunity to still respond in January. Um, if you are a peer reviewer, I definitely would want you to uh, review this and take a look. If you are the reviewed firm, I also would want you to take a look and see if there's anything in there catches your attention or maybe something that they missed in this update. Not all the sections of the peer review standards are updated. There are some that are not uh, getting any edits, um, but many are just getting, again, these light clarifications and technical corrections. All right. So again, as I promised, short and sweet and to the point, uh, I really want to close 2022 with a big thank you to all of our listeners. It has been wonderful. We get comments uh, all the time about the blog and how it's helped people stay up to date. So I want to thank you guys so much. I want to wish you a wonderful end to your 2022 and a rocking start to 2023. Uh, for those of you who are entering into busy season, I wish you the best. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you for our first blog of 2023, which will be the year 2022 in review. And we'll look at some of the standards that were issued throughout 2022 uh, by various standard setters and make sure that you are aware of what's going on in the profession. So thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been my pleasure. Happy holidays, happy new year, and we'll see you in 2023. Bye-bye.